Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will discuss about the development and validation of the SOFA2 score which was recently published in JAMA. It is a comprehensive update of the very popular SOFA scoring which we have been using for the last 30 years in our ICU. Now why did we need to update SOFA after so many years? SOFA1 hasn't been updated since 1996. Uh, the main thing that we are looking forward is there is a lot of changes in the treatment that has been is being given right now. We have a lot more mortalities for the organ failures now. So the SOFA that was there in 1996 is unable to capture these aspects. So it is unable to capture the modern clinical practice and the interventions. It doesn't account for new drugs devices like ECMO, advanced ventilation and modern vasopressors. It has an inconsistent interpretation. Ambiguity in scoring led to variable application acted across different settings and clinicians. So the study objective was to improve the content validity and to enhance the interpretability and the contemporary clinical practice across a diverse geographical resource setting. So the approach was first a data driven component following expert input then modify it by Delphi process then generalizable across the high low and middle income countries. So this was the whole objective of this particular trial. So it had eight stages in stage one and two they did a framework that conceptualized the development of the SOFA2 and did an extensive literature review. In stage 3 to stage 5, the expert include uh, the modified Delphi methods. They had around 60 intensive care experts who gave their input into how we can improve on this particular score. Then they did an internal validation with a data analysis of over 2.1 million patients. This is mainly coming from the widely available databases. Then they did a refinement and an external validation with a final Delphi and validation on 1.2 million patients. So it was a massive global data set with total 3.34 million patients analyzed across the cohort. So 1,319 ICUs from diverse settings worldwide were included. Predominantly nine countries that is Australia, Austria, Brazil, France, Italy, Japan, Nepal, New Zealand and USA. So you can see there is a wide variation of countries with different uh, economic capabilities have been included. So there were 10 cohorts of multi-center international data sets which were included that is from 2014 to 2023. So the structure, it has the same six organs that is the brain where the neurological function is being analyzed, respiratory where we are analyzing the oxidation and ventilation, cardiovascular that is hemodynamic stability, liver, hepatic function, kidney, the renal function and lastly the hemostasis that is the coagulation system. The total scoring remains the same 0 to 24. However, we must note that the gastrointestinal and immune systems were excluded after validation. So they were thinking of adding these two systems but they ultimately decided to remove it. So the major update, the major major update comes from the respiratory system where we have now a lot of more modalities by which we can improve our oxygenation parameters. So focus is on the PF ratio still where we have various cutoffs given over here. Apart from that there are also measures where you can uh, use the saturation in place of the PAO2 so which avoids the use of ABG so it can be done in a low income setup also. Advanced support recognition as we have already discussed we have more modalities like NIV, BiPAP, CPAP, HFNO and ECMO. Uh, regarding cardiovascular specific vasopressor threshold has been added previously it was a little vague and it includes mechanical support as well and anotropic support in liver adjustment has been done in the bilirubin levels in terms of the brain 
consideration of patients on delirium treatment drugs or when motor scale uh, of the GCS is available. Regarding the kidney, uh, receiving and meeting criteria for the renal replacement therapy with explicit clinical indications have been added. So, if you look at the predictive value of these things, the uh, area under the curve for predicting mortality of SOFA2 is 0 0.79, while that of SOFA is 0 0.77. So, it has got a similar predictive value and it is consistent across the countries and cohorts and is quite broadly generalizable. Now, one point increase in the SOFA2 associated with increased odds of ICU mortality, that is 1.3 times the odds ratio. The point that we must remember over here is the SOFA is not really a mortality prediction. So, it's more about the organ failure and how it progresses. So, do not think that uh, SOFA2 is a better predictor of mortality over here. It is not the purpose over here. Now, reclassification as to uh, how the both scored uh, mattered. In almost 50%, it was same. In 40%, so far, 2 was lower, which means that it was uh, not showing more organ failures. And higher so far, 2 was seen in around 11%. The redistribution of points and mortality gradients indicate that the so far, 2 better aligns with actual organ failure and improves the content validity. Now, longitudinal performance daily so far, 2 scores measured from day 1 to day 7 in over 5 0.5 lakh patients, it showed that SOFA2 values consistently higher among patients who died and uh, they had the maximum score at uh, being uh, area under the curve going from 0.87 to 0.84. The mean score provides the highest predictive validity for IC mortality. Now, beta distribution of intermediate scores, the SOFA2 score creates a more plausible distribution across the scoring, which means that you can still understand that 2 is how big, uh, how worse than 1. So, the difference has grossly reduced. Uh, like the patients with 2 points of cardiovascular score in according to SOFA1 would have been 0.9, while in SOFA2 it is as high as 8.9%, which means that we are missing a lot of organ failures due to cardiovascular if we are using the SOFA. Now, there is a diverse expert panel was used. These are the strengths of these studies. They included 60 intensive care experts with epidemiology and data science input from various setups, even low resource outcomes. Now, broad special uh, generalizability can be done because all of the uh, ICUs were involved, nine countries with varied socioeconomic context. And quite robust methodology we saw they have done a lot of rounds before they could uh, get it done. Uh, regarding the limitation, outcome restriction is a problem because only ICU mortality was assessed which was never really the true purpose of SOPA. So, uh, other outcomes were not evaluated. Uh, they did exclude GI and immune so basically the SOPA hasn't changed that much. Regarding the timing threshold based on first ICU day data, optimal cutoffs may differ later in critical, which means that the values that we are interpreting uh, on day 1 can be very, very different if that value remains on day 4. So, a day 1 score of 12 is very different from a day 4 score of 12. Uh, regarding setting specificity developed and validated only in ICU patients, uh, it should not be generalized to emergency patients or pediatric patients. And it does require feature trial if you want to do that in those patient groups. And it is not designed to compete with prognostics for mind you, this is what I have emphasized. It is not designed to compete with Apache. It is not uh, due to the enhanced organ dysfunction description. So, you must understand it is for picking up the organ failure better and not really as a predictor for mortality. Uh, regarding the clinical impact, it incorporates modern drugs and organ support system and provides an explicit scoring instruction as to which score to be taken and which type of organ support. It extends the applicability to resource limited settings as well. It better aligns with the contemporary organ failure patterns. And validation in uh, other population will re be required for this trials. So, so far, 2 represents a collaborative evidence based evolution of critical assessment for the modern era. So, basically nothing much has changed. We have just tried to align with the current practice. That's it.